one. Hey there, everybody. Pete here from Comic Book Geezers. Welcome to another edition of the show. We got in the co-captain's chair, Mr. Kirk. What's happening, my friend? How are you doing? Hanging in there, my friend. Hanging in there. Cool, Doing cool. Good, you know. Happy to have you on. Uh, Bill and I are getting together in a couple of days to do a bunch of things, but we're running a little short on content. And I know you got some stuff you want to show off. So uh, Kirk is going to take us on a tour through his collection of Atlas comics, which, you know, Atlas comics, this is vintage stuff here we're talking about. Uh, I personally have maybe, I think, two Atlas comics in my collection. I know Bill's got a handful of, but you, you've got the, uh, the vault over there, right? Yeah, I've got almost a complete run. Uh, Atlas was came out around 75. It was, uh, was it Mar Martin Goodman, I think, uh, was the publisher of Marvel Comics. He kind of got bought out, uh, packed it up. And instead of taking the money, retiring and calling all that, he decided he was going to open up a new comic company. And he said about it, he hired like top talent at the time. He also was one of the first people to start saying, like, you own your own art. Uh, he started giving the creators a lot of rights to the stuff. But the sad part was the books only lasted like four months and died. So, you know, these were books that made the stands and stuff. But by the fourth issue, and that's as far as any of the books made it, everything was gone. And uh, so it was kind of like just a quick blurb. And it was gone. They, they originally were trying to give uh, Marvel Comics a real run for their money. And I think they could have if they'd been able to hold out longer. Uh, great ideas, great books. Uh, most of the stuff you can get at a reasonable price still if you can find it. Um, and I heard recently that the whole uh, back uh, log of characters were bought for uh, the idea of using them for movies because now really? that's where comics go. Yeah, so, uh, exactly, right? Thing is, how many like uh, modern day comic readers are even going to remember any of this stuff, or will this be pretty fresh and new to them? Right? That's probably yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think I think because I think Hollywood has figured out that the idea of a superhero, which they used to laugh about. I mean, you know, for years we wanted to see a good comic movie made. Now it's like people realize, wait a minute, if we do this, the money comes. So you know, the whole Marvel universe, even the DC universe, which I've got to say, some of the stuff has been kind of, you know, uh, has made uh, some decent money. So uh, I like the Wonder Woman film, the first one. The second one was kind of yeah, second one left me good. a little. Look at stuff like The Boys too, you know, that, that you see on yeah. the streaming service and stuff like that. So yeah, there, there's a there's a home for a lot of this stuff. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. So so I, I figured I'd show you some of the stuff. As I said. They really jumped into the market really hardcore. They basically took everything that wasn't nailed down and tried to generate it. Uh, they did their own Archie book, which was called like Vicky. I don't have a copy of that. Um, but uh, again, I think that lasted one issue. But it, if you ever see it, it looks just like a book that should be, the art is very similar to that Archie look, all that. Um, but they were doing all sorts of stuff. They did, you know, they. They were big into barbarian books, which were big at the time. You know, Conan was very big. So you can see like Iron Jaw, which again, is kind of a weird, it's a little bit of a science fiction thing because you've got a barbarian running around with an Iron Jaw, uh, <laughs> you know, but if you check the covers, I mean, this one's done by Pablo Marcus. Um, this one, I don't know. Um, but, uh, you know, I think Iron Jaw actually a couple times. Um, and, and also in this book, The Barbarians, which only had one issue up. They were putting a lot of money into him. Uh, their their Hulk character, the Brute, um, which I'll be honest, it's not bad. It's not like a yeah, it's like a Neanderthal is unfrozen and comes to life and, and wrecks havoc for uh, three issues, three issues only, because again, that's as many issues as this series lasted. Um, they had a book called The Cougar. Now. <laughs> Dated, yes. The title, the Cougar, yeah, yeah. No, it's not about an older woman, uh, but uh, it's actually really a good story. Uh, it's kind of if 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 you if you like, um, you know, like old Night Stalker TV show. I don't know if you ever remember. It's your oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. It, this is, yeah, yeah. This is very similar. The the first issue is actually dedicated to the guy who came up with that series. So um, it's about a stuntman who, uh, you know, really tough guy who ends up, of course, running into all these supernatural threats. Um, and again, uh, you know, you're looking at Buckler, Milgram on, on art. 
uh, the Destructor, which was a Steve Ditko character, as you can see. Some of yeah, you could totally tell. I, I got to say, that. Steve Ditko sometimes. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you're really kind of looking, but um, and this is one that I missed until Bill mentioned it to me. Was uh, the Son of Dracula? You know, again, it's it, mid '70s. You're seeing a lot of Hammer films coming out. So this was this is actually a really good book. My favorite character of the whole lot is the Grim Ghost. Uh, it's about a highwayman who makes a deal with the devil to come back and uh, claim souls for him. So uh, again, the art is really good. Um, and you see like, uh, this one lasted three issues before finally getting uh, carted off to uh, Never Never Land. <laughs> but the, um, in 2011, somebody bought the rights to some of these characters and they, it was actually from what I uh, understand it was the son of Martin Goodman he decided to try to bring the, the series back so he brought this and a couple of other books back they were okay um, but they weren't I'll be honest with you I didn't find them quite as good um, again it was the 70s so you had Lomax uh, police books again why not um <laughs> And he also had Morlock 20, 2001. This is what the future was like 90, 20 years ago. Because uh, again, this is in the 70s. So this is, it's kind of like a plant based character in kind of a, like a 1984 kind of uh, destitute, you know, future thing going on. Um, but the sad thing too was after a while, like you could tell, like the first two issues sales didn't quite go the way they wanted and they started changing things and it just things started tanking uh so they started changing up stories trying to find the market which sometimes when you try instead of staying true to what you're doing you start you know and that's what i heard like a lot of the books by the time they got to the second or third issue they were like no no change this change it make it more like spider-man make it more like the hulk and it just i think yeah, you, you yeah, know you're better off staying with, stay with, with it yeah, you got you got to stick with it and try and build an audience, right? But obviously, they didn't have time on their side, right? Yeah, they didn't have the time, and I guess the money ran out, which is always a big thing. I mean, this is a great run too, Planet of the Vampires. It's about a bunch of astronauts that go to outer space and come back and find out the whole Earth has been overrun by vampires. Um, I heard that they, they went with this because they initially had tried to pitch for Planet of the Apes, and they were in the midst of trying to get that so they could do the comic book which would have been a big win because those were huge at the point but marvel slid in and got the rights and you know the rest is history so they they jumped on this and it's cool this is a neil adams uh broderick uh cover i mean these again they were pulling in like everybody uh shaken did a great uh character that looks like dominic fortune that was on one i, I couldn't find my copy of that uh, but they, they they were most of these were like uh really good books and you know, if you like, they did a bunch of horror stuff that, uh, you know, they were trying to sell that stuff. Uh, the Bog Beast was another one of their, you know, horror things that they were trying or the Man Monster. Again, I, I tell you, if I eat up like a, with a spoon, I'm like, I love this stuff. And, um, you know, again, they were doing spy stuff, Target. Um, but, you know, it, it was kind of sad because it, it just didn't really last they they also kind of like i don't get why they did this i'm happy they did it but they went into magazines they tried to get into magazines and they did uh what was it, two issues of thriller adventure stories before it, it died and again i think they stretched themselves too thin you know because marvel was having a hard time doing the magazines i don't know why they were doing that but um i actually got an extra copy of that this one i love Zavalina. These are, these are really cheesy. It's like their version of Vampirella. Uh, again, they were, they were stealing everything that wasn't nailed down. Really hard to find these, um, but I got those a while back. And then they got Weird Tales from the Macabre, which was pretty cool too. Um, you know, again, really good stuff. Just, you know, I think a little ahead of its time and they, they expanded too many titles out at once. But they had great people, you know, you, you know, you had Chaykin, you had Neil Adams, uh, Broderick, 
you had uh, Milgram, you had all these guys, Pablo Marcus, they're all working for these guys. They were all, because back then, these guys got paid crap anyway. So, you know, it was all like jumping in, trying to uh, get this stuff. Um, most of the time, these books are cheap too, and they're good reads. So I strongly recommend them for people if you like the older stuff. Uh, even like the army stuff, and it's all pretty solid. They did a cowboy book. Uh, so I said, a little something for everybody. If there's something out there, if you you want, give it a shot. Um, they said, a little harder to find now. As they said, I saw the Grim Ghost number one going for 25 bucks on eBay recently, wow. which I was kind of surprised. I used to find that every so often in like a dollar bin, you know, but. You yeah, I'll, I will say probably 80% of what you showed, I have never seen before. Um and there's some stuff there that absolutely intrigued me. Like the horror stuff looked like pretty oh. weird. You know, to me, it looked like a, a collection of some really interesting and different series. And then some that were just blatant ripoffs of stuff that Marvel and DC did. And maybe that's why it didn't really catch on because maybe some people thought it was just a second rate Marvel or DC. And then the really original stuff people didn't give the time of day to, unfortunately. You know, because again, you're not going to, how long were they around for? Did you say? Well, like four months. Yeah. You're, they only got all that in four months. Yeah. And there's actually, I, I'm not going to go through it today because, you know, there's like, there is, I still have like half a box of other books here that are like, you know, like Tiger Man. And, you know, what is it? Wolf the Barbarian. I mean, there's just, they were very prolific for a very short period. But I, was I think say, that's, that's a lot of publishing in four months. Holy cow. I thought you were going to say like four years. That's wow. Uh, four months. Yeah, it was, it was, it was I, I think they lasted max maybe six months or so. Cause yeah, it said max, max number of books per, per any book was four. And only a couple of those books, like The Phoenix and, I think uh, maybe Iron Jaw made four issues. That was about it. You know, most of these books, three, two, one. Wow. You know. And they probably spent a fortune publishing those. Yeah, yeah. They And as I said, they hired really good talent. They, you know, a lot of guys from what I caught were saying like, this is a great opportunity. It sounded like, you know, it was going to be the perfect place to work compared to Marvel and DC at the time. Because Marvel and DC, you know, they take your art, they, they pay you per page, they pay you crap. Yeah. And, you know, People assume that these guys who came up with all this stuff walked away millionaires, but the truth no. was most of them got, you know, got jerked around about it. So that's it, why they all jumped ship and went to the other competing publishers, you know, fairly regularly and back again, and because it was the, it was the same across the board, right? Yeah. Well, that's, that's some pretty cool looking stuff. I love the covers; they're great. They look like they put a lot of effort and time into them, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I'm gonna have to investigate some of those. Yeah, you, I'm sold. <laughs> I'm so it didn't take long to pull my arm. Right. So uh, cool. So there you have it, everybody. Some uh, cool stuff from the seventies Atlas comics, not something that you hear too much about, but we've all probably seen them at various stages throughout our lives or at conventions or whatever. And uh, definitely check into those. I think I'm going to go out and see what I can find. So I want to thank Kirk for showing those and uh, thanks for watching everybody. We got uh, don't touch that dial because Kirk and I are coming back. We're going to be doing a little tribute to uh, Frank Thorne, a uh, very popular artist who left us uh, fairly recently. So stay tuned for that. Uh, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, we'll see you all real soon here on Comic Book Users. For Kirk, I am Pete. See you guys later.